All right, so homework handouts out. It's handout three, and uh, we've been wor working with solving different angles within, or in some cases without, a circle based on different lines that make up these angles. First, if you would go and hold your homework handouts up so that I can see that they are completed. Leave them up until I ask you to take them down. Where's your handout? There we go. Good, good. Um, <laughs> all right, excellent. And uh, real quick, without looking at the sideboard now, um, just looking up here, if I have an angle formed by a chord and a tangent class. Half the difference? Half the, half the arc. Chord and tangent, remember, is going to be on the circle, so it's half the arc. Uh, angle formed by secant and tangent. Half the, half the difference of the arcs, because those would intersect outside the circle. Angle formed by two chords, vertex on the circle. Half the sum of the two arcs. If it's vertex on the circle, half the arc, because that would be an inscribed angle, wouldn't it? Two chords, vertex on the circle, being inscribed angles to half the arc. Um, angle formed by two radii. Equal arc. Equals the arc, because that would be a central angle. Uh, angle formed by two tangents. Half the arc. Half, half the sum. Half the, half the difference half the of the two arcs, because that would lie outside the circle. Angle formed by two chords intersecting within the circle. Half, half, the, sum the, half the sum of the two arcs. Angle formed by two secants. Half the difference of the two arcs. Angle formed by a chord and a tangent. Half the arc. Half the arc. All right. Uh, what do we call a region within a circle bounded by a chord and its arc? Kendall. A region within a circle bounded by a chord and its arc. A segment of a circle. Good. If an angle is inscribed in a segment that is equal to a semicircle bounded by a diameter and a semicircle, any angle inscribed in a semicircle, Ethan... Genesis. Anyone? Right angle. Any angle inscribed in a semicircle is a right angle. All right, back to Ethan. Any angle inscribed in a major segment? Genesis? Any angle inscribed in a major segment? Chris? No. Class. Acute. 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 acute angle. Any angle in a major segment would be acute. All right. Any angle in a minor segment, Ethan? Third tries the charm. Ob two. Hey, you got one. Good. <laughs> All right. So uh, keep those thoughts before you here. Let's take a look at this handout here. And um, let's see what we got. I'll attempt to draw this here. We had our circle, circle O. And we had a uh, secant line that the chord portion of the secant was, in fact, a diameter. Uh, starting here at point P through A, O, and B. From P, we also had a tangent line going to D, the point of tangency, and extended out to some point G. We had a uh, not-so-random line going across the circle to a point E. And uh, then from D, D and E were connected. We had another diameter going from D down through O. It happened to intersect AE at this point F. Um, this point down here was called C, and the lines were drawn from B to C and from A to C. And I think that's all the lines on the picture. All right, so you were given, first of all, that arc... AD was a 65 degree arc. Okay, this is not quite drawn perfectly. It's not even perfect on your paper, but it's really not perfect here. Uh, we were also given that arc BE was a 50 degree arc. You were asked to find everything else. Starting with arc DE. What did you get for arc DE, Audrey? Good, because above AB is a semicircle, 180 degrees. We've already got 115 of them. That leaves 65 additional degrees for DE. What about the arc AC, Quentin? Good, we've got 65 degrees here, and to the left side of diameter DC is 180 degrees. So that leaves us 115 degrees for arc AC. And then finally for arc uh, BC, 
was the next one, um, Jamie? 65. It should have been 65 degrees there as well, because again, below, we need a 180 degrees, or to the right of DC, we need 180 degrees. How many perfect on the arcs? Got all the arcs. Okay, excellent, that's a good sign. That means the rest of the way should be manageable. All right, so our first angle was angle BOD. What did you get for angle BOD, Chris? Uh, 115. 115, it's a central angle, right? And a central angle equals its arc. Its entire arc is 115, so the angle then is 115 degrees. For angle AFC, Chiefs and Bills. Uh, for angle AFC, oh, excuse me, I'm looking at the wrong column here, sorry. I was already jumping to the second column because I made a new column here on the board. Probably shouldn't have done that. Angle A, B, C. Let's try that instead. Angle A, B, C. Uh, Kendall. Good. This angle A, B, C right here is an inscribed angle half its arc 57 and a half degrees or 57.5 or 57 degrees 30 minutes. Uh, for angle E, A, B. I'm still waiting for somebody to do that. Angle E, A, B. Genesis. Okay, right here. 25 degrees, another inscribed angle equal to half its arc. Angle E, D, G. Um, Ethan, out here, chord and tangent. Good, half its arc still, so 32 and a half degrees. All right, now we're to the second column. Angle D, E, A, back around to Quentin. D, E, A, so another inscribed angle. 32 and a half. Interesting that each of these angles is 32 and a half. Yeah. Thoughts? What would that mean then? Anyone? Both of these angles are 32 and a half. Half the, uh, half the difference. Well, the sum. They're, they're each half their respective arcs, but they're, think uh, outside the circle for just a minute. Ignore the existence of the circle. Their, uh, their lines are parallel. Because these are alternate interior angles, so apparently these are parallel lines. Just an interesting observation. It has nothing to do with the circle, but thought I'd point that out. Uh, what about uh, angle A, F, C, Quentin? Excuse me, you answered the last one for me. Um, Audrey, angle A, F, C. Okay, so inside here now. And that is correct. It would be 90 degrees because its angle is 115. The vertical angle is 65. So yes, it would have to be 90. I'm going to put a little right angle symbol there then. 90 degrees. That's interesting as well. Uh, we'll come back to that thought. CDE. Angle CDE. And uh, let's see. CDE right here. Chris? CDE. 57.5. 57 and a half. Again, its arc is actually all of this. So 115 total gives us the 57 and a half degrees. Uh, angle B, P, G. And that's all the way out here. So the angle formed by the tangent and the secant, Jamie. 25 degrees. All right. Well, let's see. Outside the circle is half the difference, right? So the first arc is 65. And then the next arc is a full 115. So yeah, 115 minus 65 is 50. Half that difference is 25. So great job. I don't actually have an answer key. Um, don't have answers on it, so we're checking your answers as we're going along. Um, that's why I'm not just saying correct. I don't know what it is yet. All right, angle DCA. DCA right here, inscribed angle. Ethan? Right to half. 32 and a half. And we feel like we're getting a lot of the same angles over and over again, right? But that's because so many of the arcs are all matching, right? 65 combined 115. So I guess it makes sense we'll get a lot of similar angles to each other. Uh, angle E, A, C, E, A, C. Now that's this whole angle here. Um, Genesis? 57 and a half, because again, the whole arc it cuts off is 115, so yes, 57 and a half degrees. Angle E, D, C, let's see, E, D, C, oh, 
You see it's really the same angle? I had a duplicate on here by accident. EDC, CD, they're the same thing. So of course, it's still 57 and a half degrees. Um, angle D, F, A, D, F, A. So this angle here. And um, Kendall? Um, 57 and a half. All right, so DFA is formed inside the circle, correct? Which means it's going to be half the sum. So its own arc is 65, and the vertical angle's arc is 115, right? So not 65 and 50, but 65 and 115 on your calculator real quick. Add it up, half that sum ends up giving us 90. 90. And you know that makes sense, doesn't it, Kendall? If this is 90, we got another 90 because the lines are perpendicular, so 90 degrees there. Um, angle COB, Cobb, um, Audrey. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, central angle, so just equal to its arc. And then angle P, D, C, let's see, P to D to C, uh, again, this angle is uh, tangent and chord, and um, Quentin? Okay, because its arc is actually this entire semicircle, isn't it? And half of 180 would be 90. There's another way we could have approached it, is instead of thinking of it as chord and uh, tangent, think of it as a diameter and a tangent. Class, what do we know about a diameter and a tangent? Uh, perpendicular. perpendicular. That's the clang response, isn't it? So the right angle there makes sense. By the way, the right angle here makes sense since we already established these lines are parallel because if one line is perpendicular, then the parallel must be perpendicular as well, right? So uh, the 90 degrees makes total sense there. How many got every single answer correct? Quentin, good. Chris, good. How many maybe just missed one? All right, good. Audrey, okay, okay, missed two. All right, do we understand the one or two that we missed? Any questions at all on those? All right, go ahead and set that aside. If you would, take out your textbooks. Turn to page 154. We were working through some exercises yesterday and then ran out of time to finish them, so we'll finish those now. Page 154 in your textbooks. We did the first six exercises, so we'll start, pick up here with number seven today. Page 154 in your textbooks, number seven. Turning there. Take something out here real quick. All right, page 154, number seven. And uh, remember, we're looking at the two secants, two tangents, secant and tangent class. And in any case, the angle's outside the circle. And when the angle's outside the circle, it's going to cut off two arcs. The angle's going to equal class. Thank you, Quentin. Class, the angle's going to equal half the difference of the arcs. Now, there's three different cases, right? It's two secants, two tangents or secant and tangent. Now, for sake of room, I didn't have room to put all of that on the, on the board there, so I only did secant and tangent. But um, in this one, number seven, it says case three. So flip back a page, and on case three, we are dealing class with two tangents. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy that picture down. We've got our circle, we've got our two tangents. By the way, what do we know about two tangents drawn to the same circle from a common point? They're equal. They're always going to be equal to each other, right? So uh, we've got our point P, we've got our point of tangency B, point of tangency C, and then a random point over here K, just so we can differentiate which arc BC we're talking about, major arc BKC or minor arc BC. All right, so in number seven, uh, the given information here, um, Jamie, is that... Um, the uh, ERP... AC is 210 degrees. And we need to find angle P. All right. Um, thoughts on this one here. Um, Genesis, how would I find the angle given the arc of BKC is 210? Thoughts? How do I find 
find an angle formed outside a circle by two secants, two tangents, or secant tangent? Half the difference of the arcs. The problem with the Genesis is they didn't give me both arcs. They only gave me one arc. How would I find the other arc? Good. How did you find that? Right, because the two tangents only have these two points, they divide the entire circle into just those two arcs, 210 and therefore 150 when you subtract from 360. And therefore, how big is the angle genesis? Very good. The difference here would be 60, half that difference, 30. How many had the same answer, did the same thing? Excellent questions on those circles involving those angles formed by tangents, secants, or secant tangent. Any questions on those? Let's look at an interesting picture there. Jump across to the next column. Number 10 is a very uh, involved problem, I would say. Um, let me recommend maybe drawing this on your own paper only because the picture is kind of small. Now, you might be able to fit all kinds of little details in there. You might not. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and draw this on the board. You may want to draw this bigger on your paper, but we've got what appears to be a right angle here, then we've got a slightly upward line here, and of course our circle's tangent to all of this, so something like this, pretend. And then we've got this line coming down at an angle like this. So maybe try to draw that best you can. Might have, might have been a better idea for me to start with a circle, to be quite honest. Um, all right, we really don't need the center point O, to be quite honest with you, so I'm going to leave that alone. The points of tangency A, B, C, and D. And we've got chords of tangency drawn here as well to form an inscribed quadrilateral. And we have a circumscribed quadrilateral, the circumscribed quadrilateral E, F, K, L. Not sure what happened to G and H. Um, <laughs> that's just to bother people like Audrey, I am sure. We are told that uh, AB, this arc, is 130 degrees. We're told that arc BC is 64 degrees. We are told that arc CD is 80 degrees. And we're supposed to find, first of all, arc DA. At your seats, go and find the missing arc. And Quentin's already got it, though we'll give the rest of the class just a moment to catch up to him. All right, Quentin, what'd you get? Eight, How'd you get it? I'm trying to lower add all three arcs and then subtract from 360. Good. We know 360 degrees total. We've got all the other ones, so let's just add them up, subtract to get 86 degrees. How many have that same answer for the missing arc? Okay, questions on that first answer. All right, the second thing they want for are the three angles at A, B, C, and D. So angle A has three different angles. I'm going to call them angles 1, two, and three. I'm going to call these four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Do we see three angles in each vertex? Let's go ahead and find angle one, angle two, angle three, angle four, angle five, angle six, angle seven, angle eight, angle nine, angle ten, angle eleven, and angle twelve. Let's start with angle one. Uh, what kind of angle is angle one here, Kendall? It's not. But it's on the circle like an inscribed angle, isn't it? It's actually formed by two lines, A. And A. Tangent, a chord and a tangent, right? But it's still half its arc, right? How big is angle one's arc? So half the arc would be 43 degrees. How many have the same answer, thinking the same thing? Let's go to angle two. What kind of angle is angle two, Chris? Or angle two, I'm sorry, I thought angle 12 was angle two, my bad. Angle two. 
uh, inscribed? It's an inscribed <laughs> angle, and an inscribed angle equals uh, uh, its arc. Mm -hmm. Half its arc. Half its arc. How big is angle two's arc? 54 plus, is that 83? That's uh, 64 and an 80. Yeah, 64 and an 80, so 144. So half of that would be? 77. Not 70, 72. 72 degrees, there we go. 72 degrees for angle two. Uh, what about angle three, Audrey? Angle three is formed by? So it's gonna equal, how big is its arc? So it's gonna be? 65 degrees, good. What about angle four? <laughs> Jamie, what um, kind of angle is four? It's well, formed by a quarter and tangent. So it's going to equal? 65. Yeah, half its arc. Its arc is 130. It's going to be 65. Now think about it. What did we say is true of two tangents to a circle from the same point, class? They're equal. So from F, FB, and FA have to be equal. And in a triangle, if you have equal sides, class, you will have? So it makes sense that 3 and 4 would have to be equal, correct? So once you found 3, you know 4. Let's use that to our advantage here in just a moment. Uh, how about angle 5 here, Genesis? Uh, what kind of angle is 5? And an inscribed angle, of course, equals? And how big is its arc? And half the arc then would be? 83 degrees. Very good. Uh, angle 6, we would find by doing what, Ethan? Um, half the arc. Okay, and angle 6 then must be? 32 degrees. And if we know angle 6 is 32, class, seven. angle 7's got to be 32 degrees as well, correct? Mm -hmm. By the way, if you wanted to check your answers, 1, 2, and 3 form a straight angle, don't they? You could check your work by making sure they added up to 180. You could do the same for 4, 5, and 6, and so on and so forth, right? All right, uh, so we said 7 is 32. How about angle 8? How big is angle 8 going to be? Anyone? Find it, call it out when you've got it. Good. We got a 216 degree arc. It's half the arc. It's 108. All right, somebody besides Quentin, angle 9. I heard it. Was that you? 40, 40 degrees. Court and tangent, half the arc. Right, someone besides Quentin and Jamie, angle 10. 40, 40. There we go, Ethan, 40. I heard a lot of you, though. Ethan was first, right? Someone besides my front three people, uh, angle 11. 92. No, 98. 96. 97. 97, Genesis. I heard it. 97 degrees. All right. In his defense, he's not using the calculator, though maybe he should. I don't know. Three. All right, and number angle 12, class? 43. 43. Got that from Chris. All right. And again, you could make sure they all added up to 180 going all the way around in their little triplets. The next thing says, find angles E, F, K, and L. Angle E, angle F, angle K, and angle L. Well, angle E angles, bless you, E, F, K, and L plus are all going to be angles formed by? By central. Two tangents, right? All of these angles are angles formed by two tangents. And an angle formed by two tangents is equal to? Uh, half, uh, no, uh, half the difference. Half the difference of the intercepted arcs. So for angle E, its first arc is? 86. The other arc it cuts off then is going to be? Two seventy four. So if the first arc is eighty six and the next arc is two seventy four, three sixty minus eighty six, by the way, right? Or you could add eighty, sixty four, and one thirty. The difference here would be yes, one eighty eight, and so the angle would be half the difference, ninety four degrees. At your seats, find angle F. Call it when you've got it. Good. 
degrees. Ethan, 50 degrees is correct. Now, you have a 130 here, that leaves 230 there. The difference is 100, the angle's 50. Angle K at your seats. Sixteen. Genesis was first that time. One sixteen. Now, I noticed something else that I've been using as a little cheat method. Notice here, how'd it go now? We have a triangle, don't we? And I got 65 degrees in each, but what does that add up to? 130. The supplement of 130 would be 50 to add up to 180 total. So here, I didn't even look at the angles up here. I just said, that together, they're going to equal 64. The supplement is 116. There's my angle. So, class, how big is angle L? 100 degrees. It's a little cheat method you can use, right? We're talking about circles, and yet we're using triangle facts, or you could use triangle facts here. This is interesting. The angles formed by the intersections of the chords AC and BD. So if I were to draw a chord AC and chord BD, I don't know that these are diameters, by the way. I presume the center is probably right about here. So what would be this angle here? 64. No. 80. 70. 60. 90. 100. 75. 75. Wow. The sum of this arc, 64, and its vertical angles arc, 86, is a sum of 150. Half of that is 75. 140. How big is that angle going to be? 105. 105, because we know these will be supplementary. Or 80 and 130 add up to 210. Half of that is 105 degrees. The next thing says the angle between AB and DC. So AB is right here. And DC is right here. And uh, they're not parallel. Now, you can tell they would end up meeting somewhere way up above the ceiling. If they did meet, imagine a point of intersection up there. What's the first arc those two secants would cut off class? 64. The first arc the secants would cut off would be right here. What's the next arc? 86. Do you see that if these lines were extended, they would eventually meet and would cut off an arc of 64 and then an arc of 86. The angle that <coughs> way out there in space would be equal to 11. 11 degrees, half the difference. The difference is 22, half that difference is 11 degrees. And finally, the last one, the angle between EF, that's this line, and CB. Okay, I can actually kind of almost make this happen. It's going to form somewhere out there. Again, this is going to be a secant and a tangent, right? So the angle formed by a secant tangent class? Half the difference. The first angle that these two lines would cut off would be the 130. The next angle that these two lines would cut off would be? One sixty-six. So, what's the angle? Uh, 18. 18. The difference would be 36, 166, and 130 being 36. The diff half that difference would be 18. Questions on number 10. Kind of a fun problem with all kinds of lines there. Clear your desk of everything except for a pencil and a calculator. Now, clear your desk of everything except for a pencil and a calculator. And let's take a look at another handout. Nope, just a handout. All right, this would have been homework, but it being Wednesday, we'll, uh, we'll work this together in class here. I'll give you a moment to work it to get work at your seats there. This is handout four for those watching on YouTube. Handout four. Go back a couple lessons, find the link to those handouts in the description of lesson 97. All right, um, I've given you several arcs this time. I need you to find two more arcs and then 
Is that seven angles? Can't count. Yes, seven angles. Two arcs and seven angles. Not necessarily drawn to scale. Take a look at this together. For arc CF, we know that above the diameter AB, we have 180 degrees. 100 here, 30 here, plus that leaves? 50 degrees for your first arc. Make sure that's labeled on the picture as well. And then for arc BE, down below, again, not drawn to scale, I've got 45 degrees, 40 more degrees, that leaves 95 degrees for arc BE. Again, my drawing on the board particularly, not drawn to scale. Uh, and uh, not on your paper either, but we don't trust our eyes. All right, we need an angle BOC. Ethan, what did you get? 30 degrees. 30 degrees for that central angle, which is equal to its arc. For angle AOD, another central angle. Jamie? Um, 45 degrees. 45 degrees. Again, central angle equals its arc. Angle BAE, an inscribed angle here, Quentin? 40. Seven and a half degrees would be half of 95. I'm sure you thought half of 95. You just, yeah. All right, 47 and a half degrees would be correct for angle BAE. Uh, angle ACF, this angle here. Audrey? 50. Again, inscribed angle, half its arc. Angle ADN. ADN. Oh, I missed a line. <laughs> Let's see, I don't have an angle ADN. Now I do. All right, angle ADN, uh, formed by the tangent and a chord. Um, Chris? Yeah, 22.5. 22 and a half. It is half its arc. Uh, angle APD, right here. Audrey? 
Uh, careful, it's formed outside the circle, right? And if angle formed outside the circle is equal to... Half the, half the difference. So not half the sum of the arcs, but half the difference. So subtracting 45 and 40, and then take half of that. Very tiny angle. Again, not drawn to scale, that's okay. And then angle PAD, PAD, PAD would be this angle here. Another inscribed angle class is equal to half the arc, it's gonna be 20 degrees. The only angle that wasn't included in this exercise for no explainable reason would be an angle something like um, this one here, maybe, A, M, D. The problem is, it's not formed by intersecting chords, is it? Because this wasn't a chord. So, because of that, well, we weren't necessarily able to find this angle because we didn't know how big the arc was of its opposite angle. But remember, if you wanted an angle like this, half the sum of its own arc and the vertical angle's arc, however big that would happen to be. Clear your desk, except for a pencil and a sheet of paper. Pencil and a sheet of paper. The paper's for a cover sheet. Don't write anything on your paper, just blank paper and a pencil and a calculator. You're welcome to have as well. Pencil, paper, optional calculator, though it may be helpful for you to have that. Central angle class, Equals, equals its arc, it's tried angle. Half its arc, and it's inside the circle. Half the sum, and it's on the circle, chord and tangent. Half the arc, like inscribed, it's outside the circle. Half the difference, whether it's two secants, two tangents, or secant and a tangent. Like the last quiz you took, there is not a blank per se for your name, but there is a little bit of space there at the top of your quiz. I'm to make sure you put your first and last name. And today's date is 1-2021. 1 20 21 today's date 1 20 21 or you just put 100th day of school that would suffice as well 1 20 21 or 100th day of school if you get 100 on this quiz get you 100 grand candy bar first and last name 1 20 21 or 100th day Use your cover sheet as needed, though don't cover the picture with the cover sheet. Maybe just cover the answers off to the side. All right. No homework this evening. We'll end the video here.